let us define the concept work. If a body is displaced in a direction making an angle theta with the direction of the applied force, then work is said to be done such that W equal to the dot product of force vector and the displacement vector. If a body displaces under the action of an applied force, then work is said to be done such that the work done is the dot product of a force vector and a displacement vector which can be more elaborately given as f cos theta into s where f cos theta is the component of the force along with the direction of displacement. If the applied force and the displacement both are in the same direction then we say theta is 0 degrees. Now the work done is simply the product of applied force and displacement. And there are other possibilities like if the applied force and displacement are perpendicular to each other. For example, a person holding a load on his head and working on a horizontal platform. Now the load is vertically downwards. The displacement of the person is along the horizontal. So work done by the action of the load is zero because there is no displacement in the direction of the load. And like that for different values of theta we can understand the amount of or the, the, the quantity of work that is done under the given context. If the force vector and displacement vectors are given in their components form such that f bar equal to fx i cap plus fy j cap plus fz k cap and s bar equal to sx i cap plus sy j cap plus sz k cap then work done is, is being the dot product of force vector and displacement vector this will be equal to simply fx sx plus fy sy plus fz sz and then let's uh, look at various formulae useful in solving our numericals in calculation of work done. Suppose a body of mass m and density rho of x body is in a non-viscous liquid of density rho of x liquid. Now the minimum work to be done to lift the body through a height h in the liquid with a uniform velocity. This is important. The load is to be pulled up inside the liquid through a height h with uniform velocity is w equal to mgh into 1 minus rho of liquid divided by rho of body. Actually in this the apparent weight of the body inside the liquid is mg into 1 minus rho of liquid by rho of body. So we are applying a force to lift it up with uniform velocity equal to its apparent weight in magnitude and that into displacement will give us the work done. So the formula is mgh into 1 minus rho of liquid by rho of body and this is also equal to mgh into 1 minus 1 divided by relative density of body in that liquid where relative density of body equal to rho of body by rho of liquid. If it is, if the liquid is water, then it will be rho of water by rho of body and in the denominator now, relative density of body that is rho of body by rho of water is going to be called a specific gravity of the body. If the liquid is water, then rho of body by rho of water becomes specific gravity. So that term may be used in our end, uh, questions. So the body is placed in uh, a, a, of a specific the body of specific gravity so and so is placed in water it means rho of body by rho of water is directly given then that way, number we can substitute here so this is a useful formula to uh, calculate the work done when the liquid is placed in a liquid and lifted to a height h and suppose another case 
a uniform rod of mass m and a length l is placed on a horizontal surface to make it vertical on the surface the work done is w equal to mg into l by 2 where l by 2 is the rise of center of gravity when the rod is placed horizontally on the surface the center of gravity is in the surface when the same rod is placed vertically the center of gravity rises up to a height h by 2 or that is l by 2 here where l is the length of the rod so the work done is mg into l by 2 where l by 2 is called the rise of center of gravity and let's look at another context a ladder of mass m and length l is resting on a level floor initially the ladder is on the ground if it is lifted and held against a wall as shown in the figure here against a wall at an angle theta with the floor then the work done by the lifting force is obviously mg into h where h is the height gained by center of gravity here work is done against gravity and this is equal to mg into l by 2 sin theta here h can be obtained in terms of l as here you see sin theta equal to h divided by l by 2 therefore h equal to l by 2 into sin theta so our overall formula for calculation of work is mg into l by 2 sin theta and next suppose a point sized sphere of mass m is suspended vertically using a string of length l if the bob is pulled to a side till the string makes an angle theta with the vertical then the work done against gravity is w equal to mgl into 1 minus cos theta a very important formula the point sized sphere of mass m what we call bob is suspended by using a string of length l from a rigid support if the bob is pulled to a side till the string makes an angle theta with the vertical then the work done against gravity is mgl into 1 minus cos theta instead of bob now suppose a uniform rod of mass m and length l is suspended vertically this is a rod of mass m and length l is suspended vertically if it is pulled to a side till it makes an angle theta with the vertical then the work done against gravity is w equal to mg into l by 2 into 1 minus cos theta where l by 2 is the rise of or total value of this actually l by 2 into 1 minus cos theta all together will be the rise of center of gravity the rod is lifted so that it makes an angle theta with the vertical now the work done is formula practice it mg into l by 2 into 1 minus cos theta suppose another interesting concept suppose a uniform chain of mass m and length l is suspended vertically if the lower point of the chain is lifted to the point of suspension means we are holding at the bottom and and lifting it to make a garland actually joining the lower end to the point of suspension then the work done against gravity is w equal to mg into l by 4 here l by 4 is the rise of center of gravity here you see when the chain of length l is suspended vertically initially the center of gravity is at midpoint it is at l by 2 from the any any reference from bottom reference or top reference and now the bottom is lifted up so that the bottom point now is connected to the suspension point now the rise of center of gravity is l by 2 as a whole therefore work done is given by the formula mg into l by 4 and then another very very useful uh, formula concept here 
Suppose a uniform chain of mass M and length L, capital L, rests on a table having one by nth part of its length hanging from the edge of the table. Here is the case. The uniform chain of uh, mass M, total mass is M and length L is placed on the table so that one by nth portion of uh, the length of the chain is suspended from one edge of the table. Now the work done in pulling the chain onto the table by the pulling force here. The person exerts a pulling force to pull the total chain onto the table. Now the work done in this context is W equal to so the mass of suspended portion m by n because 1 by nth length of the chain is suspended the mass will be m by n m by n into g into rise of center of gravity m by n into g into h where h is the rise of center of gravity or height gained by center of gravity here the height gained by center of gravity is l by 2n so this total length is l by n and the center of gravity is at the middle that means from this plane of the table to the center of gravity what is the distance is half into l by n l by 2n and that is brought onto the table so what is the rise of center of gravity is l by 2n so the work done is given by a formula m by n into g into l by 2n that we write as mgl by 2n square here remember the suspended portion is 1 by nth of the total length of the chain. That means suppose if it is suspended 1 fourth of the length of the chain. You have to take n as 4. 1 third of the length of the chain is suspended. Suppose you have to take n as 3. Then we can easily write expression for work. And suppose a uniform chain of mass m and length l rests on a smooth horizontal table with 1 by n one part of the chain is suspended from the edge of the table. The work done in pulling the chain partially, earlier cases totally it is pulled onto the table. Now it is partially pulled, means only some portion of the suspended length is pulled such that 1 by n two th part of the suspended uh, still continues to be suspended from the edge of the table. Initially 1 by nth part of the chain is suspended. Now it is pulled so that only 1 by n tooth part of the chain is suspended. Now the work done in this process is mgl by 2 into 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 square. That is, this you can understand simply by calculating the rise of center of gravity mgl by 2 into 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 square is the formula and then a block of mass m is suspended vertically using a rope of negligible mass if the rope is used to lift the block vertically up with the uniform acceleration a then the work done by the tension in the rope is w equal to m into g plus a into h it is simply pulled up with uniform velocity then work done is mgh but now it is pulled up with an acceleration a so the tension in the rope is mg plus ma and now the work done for a lifting of h or to lifting to a height h is mg plus ma into h that we write as m into g plus a into h in the above case if the block is lowered with acceleration a then the work done by the tension in the rope is w equal to minus of m into g minus a into h here h is to be there minus m into g minus a into h so you see when work is when, when the load is pulled up work done by the tension is positive 
and when the load is pulled down we say now release it to move down and the work done by the tension here we say is a minus m into g minus a into h earlier it is pulled up with acceleration a now released to move down with acceleration a and then another context let's look at these are all possible uh, context of calculation of work nearly about 20 contexts are there we have to go through all those formulae now a bucket full of water and of total mass m is lifted up with uniform velocity using a uniform rope of mass m and length l here there are two bodies one is bucket along with water which is of mass capital m another is rope of mass m and length l now the all this uh, bucket filled with water along with the rope is to be pulled up now the work done by the lifting force in lifting the bucket totally onto the ground it's inside a well let us say and now it is all to be lifted up onto the ground all along the length of the rope so the work done by the lifting force in uh, lifting the bucket by using the rope is here there are two loads are being there we have to take separately that is one is of uh, bucket another as I told you of rope rope is also of mass m now bucket we treat as a point mass therefore the bucket all through is raised through a height l equal to the length of the rope so work done in lifting the bucket alone the, that component is mg into rise of center of gravity of bucket is l so mgl plus here rope is also pulled up therefore work done in pulling up the rope is mg into l by 2 only the rise of center of gravity of the rope is only l by 2 so the total work done is w equal to mgl capital m into g into l plus small m into g into l by 2 and then another uh, set of uh, context let's discuss here also if a body of mass m is moved on a rough horizontal surface through a distance s then the work done by the applied force against friction so by causing a push or pull the body is made to move on a rough horizontal surface to a distance s of course understood just overcoming the friction means dragged with uniform velocity now the work done by the applied force against friction so we are calculating only that work against friction just overcoming the friction is w equal to the friction force into the displacement and this is equal to what is the friction force on horizontal surface mu k into normal reaction so that is mu k into mg into s the total work done so work done on rough horizontal surface to drag with uniform velocity for displacement s is mu k mg into s if the body is dragged with an acceleration a that's why i'm specifying it earlier case uniform velocity if it is dragged to move with an acceleration a the work done by the applied force is the exerted applied force this time will be against friction and also causing an acceleration a so total force applied will be mu k mg that is friction plus ma and now the work done is the applied force mu k mg plus ma whole multiplied with s s is displacement so applied force into displacement work done and suppose if the body of mass m is dragged up along an inclined plane earlier two cases horizontal surface and an inclined plane of length capital L and inclination theta with the, the horizontal then the work done by the pulling force this time the body is dragged with the uniform velocity to move from the foot of the inclined plane onto the topmost point of the inclined plane along a length L so in this drag work is done against friction and also against gravity 
so work done against friction is friction force mu k into normal reaction normal reaction is mg cos theta on an inclined plane and overcoming the component of weight mg sin theta so total uh, force applied is against gravity is mg sin theta against friction is mu k mg cos theta and that multiplied with l will give us work done so our formula is w equal to mg sin theta plus mu k mg cos theta whole multiplied with the length of the plane and then if the force on body is variable and is given as a function of displacement then work done for a, a displacement with limits from x1 to x2 is given by w equal to integral of dw under limits x1 to x2 that is integral of f dx under limits x1 to x2 this is a very important formula we apply it in our numericals here force will be given as a function of displacement so here we substitute f as a function of displacement something like 2x square plus 3x like that any function may be given and any number of terms may be there all those terms can be separately integrated with the limits of displacement from x1 to x2 so we understand in our integration formula upper limit substitution minus lower limit substitution after getting the integration so it's a, it's a must question for all of us we have to very carefully understand it in our numericals video the questions are given on this all of you uh, should practice this model even this model is there in our NCRT syllabus, NCRT textbooks. In our model questions also it was mentioned from our CBSC models. So very important if the force is variable as a function of displacement then the work done is integral of f dx under limits x1 to x2. And further if the force is variable may not be given as a function of uh, x if the force is variable and displacement then the area under force displacement curve here is an integration method now suppose if you draw a graph taking displacement along x-axis and force along y-axis and we are able to know certain uh, locations of displacements where the force is here also force is variable as a function uh, uh, with the displacement now if we are able to draw a graph then the area bounded by force displacement curve gives the work done so the area under force displacement curve is work done a conceptual question and the work done in calculation of spring that also let us see if a spring of force constant k we know the definition of force constant the restoring force per unit elongation or compression the restoring force in the spring per unit elongation or compression is the force constant if k is force constant of the spring and if it is pulled for an elongation x or pushed for a, a compression x then in both cases work done by the force is w equal to actual half k x square half k x square where k is force constant and x is the pull or push more about this and its corresponding definition and all we study later in uh, in our concept of elasticity so here w equal to half into k into x square x may be a compression may be an elongation in both cases work is done so in case of spring remember the formula or work done is w equal to half into k into x square and if uh, a fixed uh, mass of gas expand against a pressure then the work done by the gas is given by the formula w equal to integral of pdv under limits v1 to v2 
here you see if a fixed mass of gas expands against the pressure then work done by the gas is given by the formula w equal to integral of pdv under limits v1 to v2 how to apply this formula and how to calculate work done is given in a numerical there in our numericals video you can better understand this so these are all the various uh, formulae for a different context of calculation of work done